Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and also a teacher, although this is largely what I do now. Uh, I still keep my hand in doing some uh, cover teaching and was doing so when the pandemic crisis hit and we had to sort of uh, move to distance learning. So what I'd like to focus on here is the report so far of the results that are likely to be released for GCSEs and A-levels in England and Wales, uh, especially following on from the results that had already been announced for Scotland and the furore that is surrounding all of it. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So with Scotland, there was uh, an issue because the results have already come out in Scotland, a different education system uh, managed by the Scottish government's uh, Department for Education. And one issue you have, and you don't just have this in Scotland, you don't just have it in England or Wales or anywhere, you, ju you just have this, is each year when exams would normally take place, uh, teachers have to put in their predictions for various eventualities because sometimes things can go a bit wrong. And what you find from a statistical analysis of these predictions is that students from certain backgrounds tend to be underestimated. In other words, when you look at, when you compare teachers' predictions to what the student actually gets in the exam, um, Kids from quite low socioeconomic backgrounds, but also certain ethnic minorities as well, tend to be underpredicted. In other words, they get better results than was the prediction. So what you can see is there's a certain level of unconscious bias. It's not deliberate. It is an unconscious bias, uh, potentially an affinity bias. And, uh, you know, who tends to suffer from this can vary. Uh, you know, depending on whereabouts in the country. But nonetheless, it's a factor, and it's a factor that can be broken down mathematically. Now, what happened when the results in Scotland were released last week? Was it last week or the week before? Now I forget. But when they were released, anyway. Um, what it was found is that there was a certain level of downgrading across the board. It was about a quarter of... of teacher grades bung down which is a lot but those from the lowest socioeconomic backgrounds were hit more severely more severely so what you had there was a double bias in there and and the scottish government as a result of this have quite rightly been attacked because it is a disgraceful oversight for anyone and I thought to myself, of course, you know, I, I teach in England and I can't see anything different south of the border when our results come out a bit later. Because let's face facts, the government we're stuck with are far, far more incompetent than the one from our iron brew drinking brethren. Um, but in advance of the results, the government put out a statement on their website. And the last paragraph reads... Results for students will almost always be broadly in line with centres and teachers' expectations. And the awarding process has been designed to allow leniency where this can be done without undermining fairness. Now, what you take from that straight away, if you imagine that there would be a large amount of game, gaming of the situation, lots of teachers inflating their predictions, because normally you wouldn't really want to inflate predictions too much. You do actually do get some inflation of predict normal predictions, but you also know there's going to be some results. And you don't do yourself any favours as a teacher if you, in fact, it's really bad, if you uh, come out with a certain number of predictions and then the results come in it and the results are way lower. You can get it. You are made to explain yourself in, in a lot of places. Um because the senior managers will cock a hoop at your predictions. Oh, this is fantastic. Well done. And then the results come out and they're really bad. Even if just by comparison, they're disappointed. They'll want to know why you got your predictions so wrong. So you don't want to get your predictions wrong. But in a situation like this, there isn't going to be that definitive, oh, what they got. But also, teachers are not stupid. Um, and, and we know 
that, I mean, I'd, I'd said some time ago, last time I did a video on this, that whatever system the Department for Education come up with, and Ofqual in, in England and Wales as the um, regulator, we know that they're going to come up with something that maps it onto historical results. So it was always obvious to me that a typical centre that would suffer from whatever system had to be, had to come up with would be an improving one. Because if they base it on, say, an average of your last three years worth of data, um, obviously a centre that's fairly stable, that should be fine. One that's improving is going to get shafted because they would have got better results this year than they got last year and, 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 and in the last few years, in fact. So they get their students get shafted. Um, but unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do about that, to be fair. But you'll know there's no point in gaming the system because actually all you'll do is you'll make your students suffer because you will be clobbered. So to have such a large amount of downgrading, really questions need to be asked. And, and why, why was it that, that kids from a low socioeconomic background, who we already know statistically, teachers unconsciously underestimate what they're going to achieve. So there's already that level of bias in the system. And then they've basically doubled down on that bias because they've hit them even harder. It's like that bias has also existed amongst the Scottish equivalent of Ofqual. And, and it would have been easy to factor in because we know based on the historic data how much for each demographic of students, how much teachers generally underestimate or overestimate their performance. And you could have built that into the model. That clearly didn't happen. Now, here in England, the results haven't come out yet. A-level results, which are the results for 18-year-olds going on to university apprenticeship jobs, come out next week. GCSEs, which is for going on to that pre-university stage the week after. Obviously, I haven't seen the results and I haven't seen the breakdown and I haven't seen any methodology for it. But reports came out yesterday saying that an advanced look at the data to the media showed that 39% of grades awarded was a downgrade on teacher predictions. 39% downgraded is not students will almost always be broadly in line. Results for students will almost always be in broadly in line with centres and teachers' expectations. That is, that is clearly not true. And, and, and that is also a much greater proportion of downgrading than in Scotland, where, as I say, it was about a quarter. And no, the broadly in line doesn't cut it because there is nothing broadly about grades. The difference between two grades you don't have a huge range of grades, particularly at A-level. You've got five or you fail. Uh, well, you've really got six, I suppose, now. But the difference between two grades is the difference being between... And apparently as well, according to this report, where the greatest downgrading has happened is between the crucial grades. And it is the difference between being able to study the subjects you want to do at A-level for a particular career and not being allowed to. It's the difference between getting that prestigious university place and having to accept something more middle tier. It is the difference between pursuing a career in medicine or something equally competitive and massively lowering your aspirations. And anyone who opts to take the exam, because that's what you can do. If, you, if you're going to say, look, whatever the, the results I've been given is bogus, I would have done better than that. Uh, I disagree with this assessment. I insist on sitting an exam. So provision has been allowed for that. It's still not fair because these students have had months without any proper tuition. They, they're not going to have very much, if any, proper tuition before those exams later this autumn. But they have the option to at least sit an exam. And if they've worked really hard and, and maybe if they've, they've had schools or colleges that have really tried to help them, then... But it looks to me like universities won't be viewing those uh, with any credit. They'll be considering them to be no better than a reset. Now, there are certain careers or certain degrees that they just won't let you on if you had to reset your exams. They will view it as that. 
uh, the super competitive ones, medicine, you know, dentistry, that sort of thing, uh, will take the view, look, you know, the people that come to us are the top, the top, the creme de la creme. They don't just get the top grades. They're the top in their college. They're the top in their school. So if you didn't get awarded the top grade, um, we don't think you're that top tier. They're going to take that view, it's, it seems to me. So you are completely scuppered. That career is closed off to you, realistically, for most people. And, and so when we think that what we actually should be doing is desperately trying to help people from certain disadvantaged backgrounds through the glass ceiling, and then what's actually been done is reinforcing it with plexiglass. And another reason this broadly in line cuts no ice is because the way rankings had to be done by schools and colleges. So I had to take part in this exercise. So let me tell you how it went. So here's how I would have, if I were part of Ofqual, this is what I would have asked. So what Ofqual wanted schools and colleges to do was to not only say what grade you predict, but also they wanted you to rank all students. Now, here's the thing. If you were going to say to me, so let's say um, you're talking about for A-level, grade A star, and you sort of what's called fine grade it, how secure are they? So you might say, um, you know, A star at one would have been absolutely nailed on. This person was brilliant. They probably would have got 100% or close to it. They were going to get an A star. Then you, or you might say, you know, A star two, which is solid A star. I'm very confident they would have got an A star. And then you might have A star three, which is, I think they would have got an A star, but on a bad day, they may have dropped down to an A, something like that. So you, you have categories within the grades. Now that would have been fine. That's not what was asked. They wanted us actually to rank everyone, everyone. Now you imagine you've got a lot of students. Let's say you've got 120 students doing your course and there's six grades. Now, it's not going to be 20 for each grade because you would hope there's not going to be very many predicted the lowest grade. You know, the bell curve. And there's, there's very good, well, hardly anyone predicted the A star. That is for your very, very top students. You might get one or two in most centres. Um, so there'll be quite a few in other grades as well. And you've got to rank each individual one. Now, imagine you're going to predict that 30 of them would get a grade B, for example. You had to individually rank each of those 30. Now, that would be a difficult enough task if the same teacher taught all of it. That doesn't happen. Different teachers will teach them. And how are they going to compare? And no, you can't just go by test results, assessments and stuff like that and, and work out a score. I mean, you could be that wouldn't be valid because you can have some students who start off well and, and they go off the boil at a certain point during the course. That happens a lot. I did that on my levels. And then you get other students, it's the other way around. They have a a bad start maybe they came from a, a school that didn't have a very good um you know work ethic or you know they didn't train them very well so they had a tough start but they worked at it and they really worked and they were really flourishing and they were making their major gains in the end and they were really going to come good um so you can't just do that either and even then you're still going to have individual students who got even to one decimal place or two decimal places the same percentage when you average out all their assessments how do you rank them it ultimately comes down to teacher judgment it has to because different teachers cannot rank that many students accurately there's going to be perception a subjective judgment and that is where the potential for unconscious bias really comes in it was not a fair thing to do at all and the other problem is you will instantly know and this is where again some unconscious bias might have crept in i want to say might because I can't speak from this one on experience. So imagine you've got a situation where you sort of know, you're looking at it and you're thinking, right, um, last year we got 10 people who got a B. Uh, we're predicting 12 people. So the bottom two that we say probably won't get that B and maybe even the bottom three. And maybe you look at the situation and you don't base it on what you really think is the ranking. You look at it and you think, okay, uh, Jane here needs that B to go on to study zoology or physiotherapy or something. And Charlotte here, I mean, they're both about the same, but what Charlotte wants to do won't actually need the B. She, her offers are for C's to go and do what she wants at university. Do you then, whether subconsciously or not, determine your ranking based on that? Which is also not fair. Um, that's how this, this, the, it went. 
it was a deeply unfair situation. And for those who are going to be unfairly hit by this, and there's going to be a lot, the appeals procedure is also being nobbled because appeals are not going to be as easy, or in many cases, even possible. Because it's obvious something like this is going to have mass appeals. So they, they basically say, no, 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 you're not appealing. Uh, and this, this is because the government, yet again, tried to keep everything secret. We do not know how they use the data provided to them by schools and colleges to come up with their grades. And we're not going to find that out until it's too late. If we did, if we'd have known in advance, statisticians could have pointed out the flaws, as they already very quickly did do with the Scottish results as soon as they came out, and we could have developed a better model. Now, the model could never be perfect, of course, because otherwise we wouldn't need the stress of exams in the first place. An awful lot of students you know, fail to achieve just because of the stress of exams. Um, but what we've come up here is a shambles. We could have come up with a better system given where we were. And it won't be because lots of schools try to game the system because like I say, um, you know, they're not gonna try and give everyone the top grade or one grade higher than they really think they would get because they understand that it's gonna be based on past performance. And if they try and game the system, actually they're more likely to be clobbered um, than not. It was in teachers' interest to really be accurate with this and consistent because they know it's gonna be based on historical data and consistent with that historical data as well. Um, any centres that tried to game it, and there may have been some, uh, would have been false to themselves. Um, but there it is. I mean, once we do get the results in the methodology, I have absolutely no doubt at all that it is going to be roundly savaged and, and criticised uh, just as much, if not more so, than, than was the case for the Scottish results, because, I mean, it's been downgraded even more south of the border. There will be an inevitable inquiry by the Education Select Committee, and that will savage it as well. But of course, it will be too late for those, mostly from disadvantaged backgrounds, that we really need to be boosting up into these more aspirational uh, careers. Um, and for all their hard work, they'll have their futures taken away from them. Uh, which is, is sad. It is sad. Uh, but there it is. Uh, that's my perspective as a teacher and also a, an internet gobshite. Let me know your thoughts on the uh, in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I will see you later.